dear beloved Caspians, welcome to our dimension. Tonight we will be traveling in different dynasties of the planet Kelsa. First we will dive into the primary populations, the knowledge of our ancestors. Then we will follow with the union of three marvelous souls, Queen Dumama, King Kishu, and King Pacheco. The travel will be divided in three marvelous opuses. The first one mentioned already, the second one with King Tomyas into the dance dynasty, followed by the huge dynasty of music, Queen Carolina. And the closure will be into the warm of the paintings. And close with Queen Nani coming in with the music. The travel will be full of sensation, emotion, thrill and warmth. Feel free to express through movement for yourself and the joy of your screen, your flatmate, your partner. Anyway, welcome. Have a good and safe trip, my dear. Today, we're going to focus on ancient Africa in the 8th century BC, as it's often omitted. We must remind ourselves that African history stands on its own, and hopefully, this gives you guys a better picture of the world and Africa's place in it. <laughs> The 8th century BC saw the development of very important events in world history, especially in Africa. This period went on to define a good portion of world history itself. In North Africa during this time, Egypt began to develop the Demotic script. The further improvement and development of Egyptian writing is one of the most crucial moments in world history. In fact, without the writing systems from the Egyptians, we wouldn't have the writing we have today. Demotic borrows from early Egyptian writings such as hieroglyphs, and that was borrowed and revised by the Phoenicians, who then gave it to the Greeks, which ultimately ended up influencing our own writing form today. This time period saw the beginning of non-literate societies of Europe and the Levant adopting writing forms from North Africa. Moving further west in the north, we get to ancient Carthage. Around 750 BC, Carthage was founded by the Phoenicians in North Africa. This is where the story of the semi-mythical queen Dido begins to take form, as she's often credited with being the founder of Carthage. Carthage occupied the rich coastal plains of present-day Tunisia. Its domain was on the seas off Sicily, Sardinia, the Balearic Islands, Andalusia, and in ports along the African coast. Its power later led to a clash with Rome. Heading all the way to East Africa, the ancient state of Demot takes form. Demot during this time was one of the earliest states in Africa below the Sahara and was probably experiencing the early stages of its classical period in modern day Eritrea. Demot traded through the Red Sea with Egypt and the Mediterranean, providing frankincense and the capital was said to have been in the Tigray region of modern day Ethiopia. In West Africa, in the region of modern-day Mauritania, the Dar Tichet Stone Settlement begins its late phases during this time. The settlement and culture begin to phase out due to environmental collapse and Berber incursions from further north. The Tichet civilization was composed of hundreds of stone masonry settlements with clear street layouts and massive surrounding walls. The fact that it's experiencing a decline in the 8th century BC just goes to show just how ancient the Dar Tichet civilization was. Much later, we begin to see the rise of the very first state in West Africa. And one of the most significant events in African history saw the classical period of the Kushite Empire as they expanded their dominion over Egypt. Kush conquered Egypt and went on to restore Nile Valley culture in a period often described as the African Renaissance. Under King Pai, the Kushites began a building program at the foot of the mountain at Jebel Barka, which developed into the largest religious complex in their extensive domains. King Pai was responsible for refurbishing and extending the Temple of Amun, 
which on its completion was the largest in the realm. The building projects of the Kushites in the Nile Valley during the 8th century BC brought African culture and civilization to a level the world had not seen since the Old Kingdom. Now that we've established some key events in Africa, what was going on in the rest of the world? Well, in Europe, perhaps the most significant event began in this period as Rome is just now coming on the scene due to the legendary founder Romulus. The founding of Rome becomes very important to European history because Rome brought ideas and infrastructure which greatly influenced the northern tribes. The establishment of Rome heavily impacted the direction of European history as they also brought writing into northern Europe, a very valuable tool which ultimately derived from Egypt, as mentioned before. In the Middle East, the Assyrians under Sargon II becomes the most dominant force in the region. The rule of Sargon saw the unification of Assyria as he took the state of Babylonia. Under his rule, Sargon also conquered the Kingdom of Israel, capturing Samaria after a siege of three years. This event was very important to world history because Sargon's action of exiling all the inhabitants of Israel became the very basis of the legends of the ten lost tribes of Israel. Now heading over to the Indian subcontinent, the Upanishads, the sacred texts of Hinduism, are written for the very first time. The Upanishads are ancient Sanskrit texts that contain some of the central philosophical concepts and ideas of Hinduism. These ancient religious texts become the most important literature in the history of Indian religions and culture. The Upanishads played a crucial role in the development of spiritual ideas in ancient India, marking a transition from Vedic ritualism to new ideas and institutions. In China, the early part of the 8th century BC brought about the Zhao dynasty's spring and autumn period, a period which saw the erosion of the Zhao royal authority as regional powers became more prominent. It was a period in China where various feudal states were vying for power. Finally, in Central America, during this period, La Venta became the most prominent Olmec center. La Venta sustained the Olmec cultural traditions with spectacular displays of power and wealth. The Great Pyramid was the largest Mesoamerican structure of its time. 8th century BC Central America also saw the middle pre-classical period of Mayan civilization. During this time, small Mayan villages began to grow into cities. The Mayan site of Nakbi is one of the largest early archaeological sites containing monumental architecture located in Guatemala today. Africa in the 8th century BC saw a golden age of ancient Nubian culture as they went on to advance civilization in the Nile Valley, and we begin to see West Africa coming into its own as its more ancient site of Dartichet ends its classical phase to lay the foundation centuries later. The 8th century BC was a period in world history that laid the very foundation of classical human civilizations, and it's such a great pleasure to see Africa's role in it.
it is not so much a, it is not so much a matter of what the individual will do in the future. It is a matter of what the future is doing for human as an unfinished project. More precisely, it is a matter of what temporality or contingency does to the race, understood as a continually reformatted division within the human species. It is a matter of an appreciation of what the future does to and with and from the race, understood as an intrahuman technology. So that's one critique.
We're honored to be here. Thank you for journeying with us. We hope wherever you are, you are.